Hi, everybody. My name is Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food with Keto. Under 20, and it's under 10 today, so I'm really excited. But that's not why I'm talking to you. Hey, listen, you know, they say everybody has their 15 minutes of fame. I had five of my 15 last week. And if it wasn't Mike from Keto Mad and another another turtle here on my channel telling me, I wouldn't have known. Well, I prob maybe I would have, I don't know, but thank you, Mike. And thank you, um, other person, I should have written down your name, I'm sorry. But yeah, Ivor Cummins and Dr. Jeffrey Berger saw that I did a review on the Eat Rich, Live Long and both um, sent me a compliment in my comment section and put me on their Facebook page, myketocoachingsarah.com and Instagram, I, I felt famous. So I've got five of my 15 used up. So yeah, pretty exciting. I only had to wait to be 67. <laughs> but anyway, it was very, very nice. And had I known they were gonna do one, I would have I would have done more exclusive of the book because I seem to be all over the page when I listen to the video that they watch. But if they knew how much their incredible keto pizza was approved by that guy back there that's not wearing tidy whities <laughs> I would have um I would have really gone on about that pizza because it is delicious but the book is absolutely wonderful it's totally it's heavy as well in content as well as um weight and um that's 400 pages right to the end of the index but anyway so that was that was special I kind of glowed a little bit yesterday and I appreciated it all right so yeah this is another candy holiday that we have coming up. And when I say that I have two eggs on my big A salad that I have on Fridays, it is not the ones that begin with C. I have the Pete and Jerry's eggs on my salad. How long did it take me not to say what was it, Ben and Jerry's, um, <laughs> for my for my eggs. So I have the the Pete and Jerry eggs uh, jumbo on my salad, not the candy eggs on my salad. Just so you know, just for clarification, in case you were wondering if I was saying something and abbreviating it intentionally, I wasn't. So this is a bit of a Sarah Smackdown on Easter things. You know, you don't have to have things that you put, like if you have a ham, you don't have to have the pineapple and the cherries and the glaze and all that stuff on it. Remember that I buy the Corando brown sugar ham and always throw out that packet because it's, and um, to me, it, it's just my favorite. And just like their bacon is my favorite. And I'm buying their prosciutto today or tomorrow on sale at Market Basket, and that will probably be my favorite. I love what they do. And I know that they are working on, along with Smithfield, in getting rid of the um, preservatives BHA and BHT, and so I'm happy about that. But I do like their products. I guess I just don't have excuses about it. So anyway, we are not having any C-R-A-P, C-A-N-D-Y, or any other kind of J-U-N-Q-U-E on Sunday, are we? No, we're not. And this could be the most final of the, I mean, when you think about it, how they have stretched it out from Halloween to Easter, and they have all these candy, carby, hallmark holidays. It is not hilarious to keep the H's going. <laughs> It's horrific, and you don't have to partake, even if those things are around. If this is your first Easter, being keto, you need to learn how to squint. You need to learn how to put that stuff away. It's not one for me, one for them. If you're doing Easter baskets, you need to really protect yourself. And remember that when you decide to do keto, it is a lifestyle change. There are a few moments that are like, Oh, I don't want to do this. This is really hard. So what? Get over yourself. I mean, regardless, if you want to succeed, there's a little bit of sacrifice, like like an Olympic person. I mean, do you think that like they'd rather sleep till six or seven in the morning 
or Ruth May, um, another keto person over in um, either Australia, Italy, someplace. And, um, you know, she's running in a marathon. I'm sure there's plenty of things that she's given up to be able to do that. We all do. You know, some of us give up certain foods. Some of us have to um, give up time. Some of us have to exert energy. Some of us have to have those moments when we are so darn triggered by something we don't think we're gonna make it through. Well, guess what? A lot of us have chosen to make it through. You need to see, you know, I always stay in the day. It's important for me to stay in my day. I wake up, I make sure that my food is put in my tracker. Before I eat it, it's weighed and measured and I have the ingredients for what I'm going to be having in the house. I usually try to make my salad right away in the morning um, after I've had some coffee and some comments um, and answering emails and, and clients and things like that. But then I, I just get the salad made. It's just done, that's done. And then there's all kinds of little things that Greg has and sometimes me too. But you know, like when, when we're cooking on the big green egg on Sunday, we cook the ribeyes that we're having that day and veggies that are going to last the whole week. And then we also cook two filet mignons, two little ones. And we usually have those um, a few days later, Wednesday or Thursday with sauteed mushrooms and a veggie for me. It's usually asparagus and the mushrooms and then my big salad. So those are two days that are taken care of right away. Sometimes I cook, um, uh, pork ribs that day. You know, I, I'll cook them in the oven and Greg finishes them off in the egg for the smoky flavor. Well, then those are three of the seven meals. Uh, we have a keto pizza, the incredible keto um, pizza, and that's like four meals taken care of. Then I have a big A salad while Greg has leftovers on Friday. That's five meals taken care of. So meals six and seven can be things like, you know, the um, party wings, or a pork chop, or something with ground beef. I love taco salads. So it's like there, done, boom, you know? And then I don't, I can go about my day. I still have to track those things. Even though I know my portions, I weigh my portions, I still track, I do the basics. So if you're looking for me on um, a video on YouTube, or you're looking for me to coach you, it is basics. I just, I just never leave the basics because they brought me here to maintenance. And so I don't need to get fancy Nancy. I don't. I love wonderful, um, gorgeous salads, organic. Um, you know, I am organic with my lettuces. Um, and then I'm, I try to be organic with the rest of the stuff. My butter is pasture-raised um, organic. And so is my cream that I put in my heavy whipping cream. It's usually Organic Valley because I get it at Market Basket. My coffee is organic. So it's just, it's eensy little things that make a difference. And, you know, I know that some people still have sugar cravings after becoming fat adapted. And I just wonder if they're getting enough fat. If you track, look and see how many grams of fat you're having. Some people have as many grams of protein as they do of fat. It might work well with the younger metabolism, but if you're an oldie but goodie like me, you know, you might need a little less protein and a lot more fat. Um, I know somebody sent me a thing that older people need more protein. Um, I don't, I don't believe I'm one of them. I appreciated all of her information and it may be true because I know people that have more protein than me and they just do fine. You know, every person is different. That's why I call us snowflakes here because we have to find the recipe that works for us. And I think that a complimentary recipe, as it were, for you, for me, is food that you like, so you stay abstinent with what you're eating, and your body likes it, and the scale shows it. I think a lot of us want the scale to show it, and a lot of us want to be satisfied and satiated with our food, so we're not drifting off into Pinterest and starting to think we can make either keto-fied things or allow old thinking carbs, sugars, and grains back in. I don't think we can. That's why we're pickles. Because once you become a pickle here in Ketoville, you can't go back to being a cucumber. 
A cucumber is somebody that is still out there doing the standard American diet, either the Weight Watcher version, the Nutrisystem version, the on their own version, the not paying any attention at all version. Yeah, you know, the, the American um, the American Diabetes Association, the American Heart Association, and then our, our silly little pyramid with all those grains that nutritionists and doctors keep pushing, you know, like we're back in the 80s. They, they haven't been to a continuing education course in decades. How do they get away with that? Gosh, I know as a realtor and as a counselor, you know, I've got to have all these CEUs. How come they don't have to go and, and get a memo that maybe grains and sugars and artificial sweeteners aren't good for us? Amazing, isn't it? So you don't want to be partaking in formerly okay Easter traditions of eating. I'm sorry, but you know, maybe maybe you're going to be a good sport and provide all the things that you used to partake in without giving it a thought, thinking that as soon as Easter's over, I'm going to do something. Because isn't this the final holiday of crap? And so a lot of people still think they've got a chance, you know, to get to the June, July, August, kind of, I can be seen in shorts again, place with their body. And so as soon as this is over, well, guess what? There's always going to be a holiday around the corner. Um, Hallmark has made sure of that. So, you know, the next one coming up is going to be, you know, Memorial Day cookouts and then 4th of July. There's always going to be a reason to eat. There's always going to be a reason to overeat. It's, it's set up that way. You know, if you take a step back and start getting cynical, jaded, and bitter like me, <laughs> maybe it's because I'm not having any sugar, huh? Um, you know, then you'll begin to see that there's a pattern to all of this. It is a sick care system that we have. It has nothing to do with health care system, okay? So you need to take the reins of your own cart, your own carriage, and and guide yourself, learn, begin to experiment with your body. Eat, eat food like it's a medicine, because it is. Many, many of us here in, in the keto community have learned that. We've learned that like, oh, we are the captain of our ship and we need to take the, the reins and buy the foods and get used to them. You know, I know one man that like, ooh, a salad, ooh, green, ooh. And now he has a big honking one every single day, you know? And so, sorry. Um, and then, you know, he's on his way. He's lost some weight. Huh, hmm, how does that happen? It happens because we change our palate. And once you start changing your palate from sweet, sugary, carb-addicted, blah, to a fat-adapted way of eating, you're gonna find that those things don't hold an appeal and you're looking at them and they're, they're setting up cravings because they're all there splashed everywhere as usual. It's set up to trigger you. Trigger is the head, okay? That sets up the craving. So you start needing to taste it and then that's when you can get into trouble. And if you're not, if you're not monitoring yourself or somebody else isn't monitoring you with a set of eyes saying, mm, what, where'd you get, what made you think you could have that? <laughs> oh yeah, um, you know, you could get into trouble. You don't wanna get into trouble. This is not a self-sabotaging food plan. This is a lifestyle to get you thinking healthy, being healthy and losing weight and making like grown up decisions. This is a grown-up way of eating. It's a like, no more doors on the left. You've already done all those food plans that have weight loss in mind, not health. And okay, so you lost the first 10 or 12, maybe even 30, and you were 30 when you lost the 30. Okay, and you went back when you were 40 and you joined it again and there was a different program and you lost 18 and then you stalled and then you gave up because spending 20 or $40, you know, 20, how much do you spend to weigh in for a month? How much did you spend to, to track? 
you know, and then it's like I use the chronometer. It's $36. That's $3 a month. That's 75 cents a week. Is it worth it? Yes. I love being on maintenance and I love fat. So what do I do? I don't even have to compromise. I spend the 75 cents. I load up my fat grams for the day and I'm happy. And you can do it too. It's there for you. But get your head, get your head out of this being a food plan for when, until I lose weight. And then I'll go back. It's not one of those. So just go back to what you were doing, write out the big checks and, you know, buy all their crap at the meetings. Don't, don't even bother. This is for when you've had enough. There's no more doors on the left. There's no more holidays that are excuses for trying to get away with something. You don't even want to ketify something. And if you do ketify something, you're telling me that you've been doing strict, structured, weighed, measured, tracked keto for six months. Okay, I'm not a keto fire, and I won't be. I'm on maintenance. It's not my game, except for the pizza. But if you are, and you must, you got to tell me that you got six months of clean, structured, real clean, abstinent eating with keto. None of that fluff, none of that fancy flour, looks like, tastes like, your company won't know the difference type of um, desserts and, and uh, breads. Fine if you get away with it after six months and it works for you and it keeps you from being bored and it keeps you from dipping into places that you shouldn't. But just know that I am basic. One, two, three. No grains of any kind, no sugars of any kind, no artificial sweeteners, no diet sodas, and no fruit. And from there, I build a fat, a fat that's high, protein that is moderate, and low carbs under 20. And that is how I got to maintenance. So why am I going to mess it up now? I'm not. And I hope you don't either. Have a, <laughs> have a safe holiday. And I don't mean travel wise. <laughs> and I hope if the Easter Bunny comes, he's coming with a Fitbit and a coupon for Athleta outfit and that kind of stuff. I will see it or a couple of jars of avocado oil, olive oil, macadamia nut oil. That's what we want the Easter Bunny to bring us. So stay safe, because you have to answer to me on Messy Monday. And whoever wants to face me on Messy Monday, no. So thanks for watching. This has been Sarah. Be safe. Bye-bye for now.